Adam, Ruth, hey, congratulations. How does it feel for being at, here at San Diego Comic-Con? It's crazy. I've never experienced anything like it. It's amazing. It's my first one. I'm a virgin. Yeah. Oh, really? It's really yeah. funny watching Adam experience his first Comic-Con. It's made it kind of fresh for me again. It's yeah. super fun. Oh, so you've been here before? Yeah, like this is maybe my sixth time or something sixth like that. Time? Yeah, I, with a two-year break, obviously. We're all just coming back after a hiatus, a COVID hiatus. Oh, wow. Well, it's, a, it's very exciting to be here this year is because both of you are here to present... Nandor Fodor and the Talking Mongoose. There you go. Sorry. Oh, I was just to say it at the same time. <laughs> yeah, Nandor Fodor and the Talking Mongoose, my new movie. Well, let's, let's, let's talk about this. Where, where, where did the original idea came from, Nandor Fodor? It's a true story. I heard about this very strange, niche piece of British history then you know it, about the Isle of Man and this f family of farmers that believed that their home was haunted by a talking mongoose and this was a real thing and it was a big tabloid story back in the 1930s and I it was so strange that I thought I have to write about this and then mm -hmm. f it 10 years later I finally came up with the the message or the subtext that I wanted to include and then put the script together and you know got Simon Pegg and made the movie. Wow. Ruth, have you heard about this story about a talking mongoose? I, I actually hadn't, but I went to the Isle of Man where it's set and everybody there knows it. And like every other person in the UK has some knowledge of it, like the Loch Ness Monster. I can't yeah. even say it right. Yeah. I'm from Scotland. The Loch Ness Monster. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of like that, but for the Isle of Man. So yeah, it's got, there's a, a radio station in on the Isle of Man called Jeff the Talking Mongoose. So there is, there's already some kind of yeah. folklore and mythology there. Yeah. So what, what initially drew you into this project then? I, just the offer of a job. <laughs> no, but seriously, I, um, I love the audition sides. The character just really jumped off the page. And I really love independent film. That was always my first love. I always thought that's what I was going to do. I never for a second thought I would start doing like a, a CW show. That was never what my aim was. So to be able to come to Britain, um, an American brought me back to Britain um, to do this film was fantastic. I just, I loved being um, back home and filming. It was wonderful. Wow, that is that is terrific. Now, Adam, I spoke to you for a film called Cherry. And yeah. so, so in my head, I'm trying to figure out like what kind of film this is going to be because Chariot was was yeah. bonkers. Yeah. Okay, so what 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 kind of film is a talking mongoose going to be? This is very different. It could not be more different than Chariot. This is a British dark comedy, and someone seeing this who has no idea who I am would think this was written by probably an older British man. I mean, it is very dry. It's very British. Still a little bit bonkers. It, oh, it's it's insane. I mean, it's mine. So it's I mean, it's a story about a talking mongoose. You know, it's it's so it's very strange, but it's linear. You know, Chariot I told in a very specific. I mean, that was like channeling as much David Lynch as I could possibly conjure. Mm -hmm. This is different. This is Wes Anderson. This is the Coen Brothers. This is, you know, meets the prestige. I mean, that's what this is, and it's it's linear. It's definitely much more of a comedy as mm -hmm. well. It's still dark, but yeah, so, so it's quite different. It'll feel a bit different. Wow. Yeah. I forgot to ask you, Ruth, who do you play? So I play Mrs. Irving. So Mrs. Irving, Tim Downey plays Mr. Irving, Irving and um, we have a daughter. We're the family who are on the farm who, who believe there is a talking mongoose in our wall called Jeff and alert the, the local press and, you know, we're, we're the kind of... We're the sort of David Lynch part of your film, I think, in this little farmhouse with no electricity. Absolutely. Uh, in the middle of nowhere. Oh, wow. She plays the mongoose, can't she? She's <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> Someone plays the mongoose. Well, maybe. yeah, we'll maybe. We can't talk yeah. about that part. That's, a, <laughs> That's the mystery you have to watch to find out about. Yeah. Now, where, where, where is all this film? Did you, did you film in the Isle Man? <laughs> I tried. So when I, when I initially spoke to the British production company that we were going to work with, I said, you know, this takes place on the Isle of Man. Let's shoot on. They were like, you're not shooting on the Isle of Man. I was like, what do you mean? And I, the Isle of Man, for some reason, has this stigma in the UK of like, it's hard to even describe. It's almost like the Alabama of the Isle of, of you, England. You it, can uh, physically transport everything you would need. But it would be so crazy to... That was the other oh, thing. Weird. I mean, that, that was the thing. They said, like, you know, you got to take a ferry there, mm -hmm. you know. So mm -hmm. we shot this in Yorkshire, uh, West Yorkshire, which is kind of the north central England. And, mm -hmm. it, and it looks very similar. I mean, to be honest, all of England looks just beautiful rolling hills and, you know, 
clouds, you know, so it was perfect. And, and it definitely fakes it well it, for it that. It does. I went to the Isle of Man and it's the same latitude pretty much. And it was remarkably similar. And the weather was exactly the same. And yeah. Now, you said uh, Simon Pegg anchors this film. So let me, let me ask you first, is uh, how, what was it like directing him? An absolute dream come true. I mean, like it's, it's, this is going to sound disingenuous, but it's not. I, for a superstar, I mean, like a straight-up movie star, to be as cool as he is, it's actually unusual. And honestly, like even my crew were saying that. Like I had a couple guys say, like, I've been such a massive Simon Pegg fan for so many years, and it's so great that he's so cool. And he really is. I mean, he he was incredibly supportive of me, and it was so smart of him to be so supportive of me because it helped propel me to make a better movie. Because every day, I mean, he was just like, dude, you're killing it. You're amazing. You got this. You got and it like and it helped me like I'm, this guy's a legend. Yeah. And he from the very beginning, like from the first read of the script, he was like the biggest cheerleader. And so and just an absolute and and a setting aside the fact that he's incredible in the film. So. Well, of course, you know you get you get to star with Peg, and yeah. I, I and I am intimidated when I speak to him. But how was it on screen? He's the sweetest, nicest. He's so intelligent. He's emotionally yeah. intelligent and mm. is wonderful. And Minnie too, and Christopher Lloyd, you know, and yeah, yeah, the whole everyone in the cast was wonderful, really. It's true. Well, most excellent. And this is currently in production, so we're, hopefully we're going to see it soon. Yeah, we're about a month out. We, we finished shooting about a month ago. We're editing. I, I'm First quarter of next year is most likely when it will get released about a year after Chariot. So, yeah. This is great. And one more thing. Do you get... To, you get to keep your accent. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, the accent um, from the Isle of Man is much, much stranger than my accent. It's a really? mixture of Irish... Liverpudlian, English, tiny bit of Scottish. It's a real mixture. So I actually went and recorded people from there talking. Uh -huh. But this is set in the 30s when things would have been, their accents would have been stronger anyway. So we do our own version. We work together as a family and we came up with a kind of sound that's kind of sort of Liverpudlian but with a touch of Isle of Man, I think. Yeah. That should, it, it defines us as a family to be sound kind of similar. Would I put you under pressure if I tell you, tell you to say something? Yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe you could say the title of the film in that accent. No, just, just, no just, I, I really can. <laughs> I never had to say that during filming. I have no idea how. <laughs> no, let me tell you something about the accents. I think my the, the accents in this movie are beautiful. Like mm -hmm. just from as an American observer, it was like just this lovely sort of medley of accents. And the you know the best one is Simon because he's playing it American. Mm -hmm. He's the most, you know, prominent sort of like British actor mm -hmm. surrounded by all British actors playing an American. And so yeah. it's great. And his accent is American Hungarian and and he sounds like Christoph Waltz. Like it's really? beautiful the it's way perfect. he speaks in this. It's so great. And then Ruth's accent, it's amazing. Gary Beadle had this amazing accent. Tim Downey, Paul, K was Paul K's really accent. Strong. Yeah, they were great. So and the mongoose. And we can't talk about yeah, that, but yes. He's a kind of different kind of accent. He's yeah. very worldly. He's traveled Other a lot. Other worldly. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, most excellent. Hey, we're, we're going to be very excited, and I can't wait to uh, speak to both of you, hopefully again, Yeah. Uh, about when this come, 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 comes out for yeah. Nandor, Fandor. Nandor Fodo. Nandor Fodo. And, and the, the monk. And, talk, and the talking monk. <laughs> very <laughs> well done. There you that's go. right. Yeah, that's that's right. It. Nandor Ford and the Talking Mongoose. There it is. Thank you very cool. much. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot, man. Thank you. Thanks.